When embarking on an ERP implementation, choosing the best ERP software for your organization is one of the most important things you can do. So what I want to do today is talk about our independent and technology agnostic ranking of the top 10 systems in the ERP software market. And there's been some significant changes to this year's top 10 list when compared to last year. So be sure to stick around to see who the new number one vendor is. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And with hundreds of different ERP options in the marketplace, it can be overwhelming to figure out which system is the best for you. When you add to the fact that software vendors are biased and most industry peers and players in the industry are biased as well, it can be a bit overwhelming and daunting. So being an independent and technology agnostic firm gives us the luxury of evaluating and ranking the top 10 systems as we see them related to how our clients select and implement these different solutions. Before I jump into the top 10 though, I wanna talk about the methodology we used. The methodology we use is based on our customer's experience with these different systems. So we evaluate and help clients implement all types of different solutions across a number of different industries. So we look at things like overall functionality, the maturity of the system, the ease of integration, the flexibility, the overall customer adoption rate, those are just a few of the criteria we use to identify what are those best systems in the marketplace. And the other caveat I'll add is that this is a general ranking. So you might have very specific needs in a very specific industry that might shuffle or scramble this top 10 list for your specific needs. So the idea here is to provide a general top 10 ranking based on general needs across multiple industries and geographies throughout the world. So let's just jump right into the top 10 list. Coming in at number 10 is Acumatica. Acumatica is a software vendor that was not in our top 10 list last year, but is a new entry into our top 10 list this year. And the reason Acumatica has emerged as an up and coming player is largely because they've defined a very clear niche in the marketplace. They tend to focus on manufacturing distribution organizations. The product has a very clear user interface and the pricing model is very conducive to the small and mid market, especially if you're a low volume high margin type of manufacturing or distribution company, it can be a very cost effective solution with a very high ROI. And the reason for that is because they have a very unique pricing model where they price based on transaction volumes. So if you have a lot of high volume, low margin types of products, it may not be a good fit, but if you have a moderate to low volume, but higher margin types of products, it can actually be very cost effective for organizations. In addition to the extensive user interface, there's also R&D dollars that are being pumped into the product via private equity firm that just bought the firm not too long ago. And that's always a good sign of a product that's up and coming when there's private equity money behind it. So you combine all these things together and that's a reason to put Acumatica at number 10 on our list. Coming in at number nine is Salesforce and Financial Force. Now this is a product that's actually dropped a couple of notches in our ranking from last year. Not so much because the product itself has changed or gotten less desirable, but because there's other vendors that have made bigger strides and bigger advancements and we've seen greater success with than Salesforce. But having said that, it's important to note that many people view Salesforce as purely a CRM system, but really Salesforce and Financial Force and Force.com platform, that all has become somewhat of a ERP platform for general ERP capabilities, even outside of CRM. So I mentioned financial force on the financial side, you have extensions like Rootstock, which is a vendor that's built on Salesforce that provides manufacturing ERP capabilities, just to name two examples of products that provide ERP like capabilities. Now Salesforce is a good fit for organizations that might be looking for more of a best of breed and a flexible type of solution where they can bolt on different types of systems, different modules to meet different needs as the organization grows. But along with that comes a dark side, which is that a lot of organizations find that that flexibility can create a lot more complexity in terms of integration and cost. It also puts more pressure on your IT department to maintain that system. So those are some things to think about, but in general, that's enough to land Salesforce and Financial Force at number nine on our list. Coming in at number eight on our list is Odoo. And Odoo is an open source ERP system. It's new to our top 10 list although you may recall seeing it on our top 10 list of ERP systems for small business. This year it made the general top 10 list largely because we've seen it scale for some mid-size organizations as well and for the general functionality and capabilities that the product has expanded to in recent years. So just to 
hone in on this open source concept. Open source can be a good thing in terms of a price tag for the software licensees, but the downside is that as you start to add on different modules and different capabilities, that number can actually go up, that price tag can actually increase. The other downside of Odoo is that it can be complex to maintain. So if you don't have a fairly sophisticated and mature IT department that can maintain the complexities of an open source system that just requires more IT sophistication, that could be a downside as well. It can also be a downside when it comes to scaling for large organizations, but for small and mid-market organizations, Odoo can be a very good fit, especially if you're looking for something with maximum flexibility and maximum modularity to be able to tie together different modules uh, within the organization. So with all that being said, that's enough to land Odoo at number eight on our list. Coming in at number seven is Sage X3, which is a product that fell a couple notches from last year's ranking. Again, not so much because Sage X3 is less desirable than it was before, but because other vendors have made further advancements in their product. But Sage X3 in general is a great product. It's a core financial system. It's great for manufacturing and distribution types of organizations, as well as organizations that aren't in manufacturing and distribution. It's a good tier two alternative to some of the bigger ERP vendors in the marketplace. And some of the downside risks of the product include a couple things. One is that we find it's not as scalable for really large and complex organizations as some of the other products in our top 10 list. So if you're a larger, more sophisticated global organization, it may test the boundaries of your organization. And the second thing is the user interface isn't quite as clean or user friendly as some of the other systems in the marketplace. But with all that being said, that's enough to land Sage X3 at number seven on our list. Coming in number six on our list is Infor Cloud Suite. This is a product that's actually moved up in our ranking this year. And one caveat I have to throw out there though is that the Infor Cloud Suite umbrella is very broad and it may be a bit misleading because there's actually multiple systems within the Infor Cloud Suite umbrella. They're trying to brand or rebrand the product as Cloud Suite, but you still have the segments of different products that they work with. Now, M3 is a product that we often see in manufacturing situations. We also see Infor Sightline as one of the solutions that we see in manufacturing types of environments. And then there's also Infor Nexus, which is a supply chain management solution and actually one of our top 10 supply chain management systems in the market. And the reason I bring up these three different solutions is because Infor Cloud Suite involves a lot of different systems. And the system within the Cloud Suite umbrella that's best for you is gonna depend on your needs. But in general, when we look at the Infor Cloud Suite umbrella, we find that it has a great robust and wide variety of business processes and capabilities that fit a lot of different situations, especially organizations that are in manufacturing and distribution, but we also see Infor being used by a lot of non-manufacturing organizations as well. They also have a lot of R&D dollars as a result of Coke Industries putting in a lot of money into the acquisition of the company. And now the downside of Infor though, just like every product in our top 10 list, they have a downside as well. The downside with Infor is largely the product roadmap just understanding which of these systems to piece together to give you the solution you need, that can be very confusing. It can be very daunting. And it's important to really make sure you're honing in on the right solution, whether it's M3 or Sightline or Nexus or some of the other solutions that they offer. So that's one thing. The other thing is the cost of the solution it tends to be a bit higher than some of the others that we've covered so far in our top 10 list. But having said that, those cost differences can oftentimes be negotiated away. But with all that being said, that's enough to land in for Cloud Suite at number six on our list. Coming in at number five on our list is IFS. And IFS was in our top five last year. It actually dropped just one slot to number five this year. It's a great product, strong enough to finish in our top five. And the reason it is in our top five is because it is a very focused solution. It's not trying to be everything to everyone and it tends to focus on industrial manufacturing and distribution types of companies. So if you're a company that has a lot of project management or asset management or maintenance and repair types of functions, IFS is a very good fit. Now, the reason it fell from number four to number five is largely because it's such a narrow focus, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when we're looking at a broad general ranking like this one, there's other solutions that can provide broader capabilities to meet a number of different clients' needs. But if you're one of the organizations that fit within that sweet spot of IFS, you might actually put IFS at number one on your list. So it's a matter of understanding what those strengths of the product are relative to your needs. And it has a good user interface. There's a lot of R&D dollars being spent on the product itself. And the organization is also focusing on expanding its value-added reseller network. It's 
network of implementation partners, if you will. So those are some up and coming aspects of IFS that I think will prove that it has a very bright future. Now, the downside of the product is that it could be a little more expensive than some of the solutions in the marketplace. We find that dollar for dollar, you're going to spend a bit more on IFS, but you may be getting better capabilities if it's the right fit for you. And then the other big downside of IFS is largely perception based, which is that a lot of organizations haven't heard of IFS. They're a European based company. They have a good presence in Europe and they're still expanding and still trying to increase their market share in other parts of the world. So as far as referenceability and having peers that use the product, you're not going to have as many peers using IFS as maybe some of the other products in our top 10 list, but that's not necessarily a terrible thing either. So all that being said is enough to land IFS at number five on our list. Coming in at number four on our list is SAP S4 HANA. It's actually moved up a couple slots from last year, largely because they're starting to get some traction and momentum on building that maturity that they've struggled with for the last few years since HANA was released several years ago. Now, S4 HANA is very strong in financials, inventory management, sort of your vanilla basic ERP functionality. So it's really one of the best when it comes to financial flexibility and financial capabilities, GL capabilities, product costing, all that stuff. Now, where S4 HANA tends to struggle is once you get outside the core and you start to look at other advanced capabilities like manufacturing or advanced planning, product lifecycle management, even some of the CRM capabilities are lacking. So it's still not as mature of a product as it could be and will be someday. And it's certainly not as mature of a product as the old ECC product was, or even R3, which are the old legacy SAP products. So that's probably the biggest thing holding back the product. Now, on the flip side, there are some maturity issues with some of the expanded capabilities, but what SAP has done to partially address that is to go acquire other companies. So they've acquired products like Ariba on the procurement side of things, success factors on human capital management, Concur as it relates to time and expense. So they've become somewhat of a best of breed provider, but with that comes a dark side, which is now you have multiple systems that you need to tie together. So the SAP roadmap is still a bit kludgy. It's a bit hard to navigate in terms of understanding what products might be the right fit for you within the SAP umbrella. But having said all that, just based on history and based on SAP's track record, especially with the larger, more complex organizations, I'm fairly confident that SAP will get there and S4 HANA will get there soon enough. And we actually have seen a significant amount of progress here in the last couple of years as it relates to that. So having said all that, that's enough to land SAP S4 HANA at number four on our list. Coming in at number three on our list is Oracle ERP Cloud, which along with SAP is one of the gold standards for larger Fortune 1000 types of organizations. And when we compare Oracle to SAP Cloud and really just to explain why Oracle is ahead of SAP, it's largely because Oracle is a more flexible product. It's something that can be tailored more easily than S4 HANA can be in general. It struggles with a lot of the same things that SAP struggles with with S4 HANA in that Oracle ERP Cloud is still a work in progress. There's still a lot of advanced manufacturing capabilities that aren't baked into the system yet. And there's still a lot of missing components of Oracle ERP Cloud. But having said all that, Oracle ERP Cloud is, is a very broad and robust product that can meet a lot of different industry needs, especially if you're a diversified, larger, more complex organization. And if you value flexibility and ease of integration, Oracle can be a great fit. So with all that in mind, that's enough to land Oracle ERP Cloud at number three on our list. Coming in at number two is last year's number one solution, which is Oracle NetSuite. And still a very solid, respectable ranking at number two in our top 10 list, but it did drop. And the reason for that is largely because we're seeing some concerning trends with NetSuite. But let me start with the positive things. The positive aspects of Oracle NetSuite are, first of all, that it's one of the pioneer software as a service types of solutions. So it's been in the cloud for 20 years, well before all the other vendors try to play catch up. So they have a very mature solution that's been in the cloud the entire time it's been around. It was built for the cloud. It has an architecture built for the cloud as well. It also focuses on small and mid market companies. So if you're a fairly vanilla small and mid market company and you're looking to upgrade from QuickBooks or your basic accounting system, NetSuite can be a logical next step in your evolution through the digital transformation. Now, the downside of Oracle NetSuite is, first of all, the pricing is fairly high, especially for a small and mid-sized organization. It can actually be pretty costly in the long term because you have a recurring subscription model with a lot of hidden costs that can actually escalate over time. 
The other downside that really held it back from being in the number one slot is that we're starting to see more issues with implementations with Oracle NetSuite. And this is just strictly a hypothesis, but my theory is that Oracle, since they acquired NetSuite, has gotten so aggressive with pushing further into the small and mid market, but also pushing upstream to larger organizations. It seems as though they may be getting over their heads in some cases with where they're selling Oracle NetSuite. So that's something to keep in mind as well as making sure that you understand whether or not Oracle NetSuite really can meet your needs and that you're getting an agnostic view of that evaluation. And then the final thing that really holds back Oracle NetSuite is the fact that it does have a lack of flexibility when compared to other systems in the marketplace. So if you don't like the way NetSuite was built, it's very hard to change when you compare it to say a Microsoft E365 or an Oracle ERP cloud, or even some of the other systems in the marketplace. So that lack of flexibility relative to the other systems is partially what holds it back. But again, very solid, respectable, number two on our top 10 ranking for this year. Coming in at number one is a new number one, very different from last year, which is last year's number two system, and that is Microsoft D365. The primary reason why D365 is number one is partially because there's two different solutions that D365 offers. There's Business Central, which is built for small and mid-market companies, those with more vanilla or straightforward requirements. And then there's Finance and Operations, which is for larger, more complex organizations. So you have two distinctly different systems meeting distinct needs of different types of organizations. But on top of that, you also have the flexibility and the user interface of Microsoft. A lot of organizations are comfortable with that user interface. A lot of organizations value the flexibility that D365 provides, especially when you compare it to say an Oracle NetSuite or an SAP S4 HANA, Microsoft D365 could be a lot more flexible. Now, the dark side to this, though, is that just because you can change the D365 system doesn't mean you should. And a lot of organizations get tripped up during the implementation because they try to over customize or over change the system the way it was meant to be used. The other appealing factor of Microsoft Dynamics is the fact that it's so easy to integrate with other systems and that it has that Microsoft look and feel. Those are some of the common reasons why many of our clients opt to go with D365. Now, one last dark side that I'll throw in here, even though they're number one on our list, the biggest dark side of using D365 is their value-added reseller network. It is a complete mess. There are just way too many providers out there that are selling D365, they're implementing D365, but they may or may not be qualified to do so. I'd say of all the vendors in our top 10 list, Microsoft probably has the least amount of control and oversight of their reseller network. And that's a big problem when it comes to implementation. So if you do choose Microsoft Dynamics 365, just know that the product itself may be ranked number one on our list. But when you choose the implementation partner, you want to make sure you look carefully at the options you have, because that whole ecosystem has a high degree of variability in the competencies in terms of the implementation providers. So all that being said is enough to land Microsoft D365 at number one on our list. So while we just shared the top 10 list with you, there's a lot more systems that didn't make our top 10 list than did. Some examples include two vendors that were in our top 10 list last year, but fell out of the top 10. And those are ServiceNow and Workday. And it's not so much that those products are inferior compared to the other top 10, but they are just not as complete of an ERP product as the others in our top 10. That's the main reason. The other reason why Workday fell out of the top 10 is largely because we're seeing a lot of implementation issues with, with customers that are implementing the product. I don't know how much of that is a reflection of the product itself versus the implementers trying to implement the product, but either way, it's enough to knock Workday out of the top 10. And ServiceNow is, is somewhat of a myopically focused solution that can be used for ERP purposes or ERP light purposes, but it's not a true robust ERP system as many of the other vendors are. In addition to those two systems that fell out of our top 10, there's a whole host of other systems that are great products that you could argue should be in the top 10. So you have products like Epicor, which is a product that's very strong in the manufacturing and distribution space. You have a product called DCOM, which focuses on process manufacturing. You have Aptian, which is a great product portfolio with a lot of private equity investment behind it. So those are just a few examples of some of the products that didn't make the top 10. But what I'll note is that even if a product didn't make the top 10, doesn't mean it's not in your top 10 or shouldn't be on your shortlist. So be sure you take this all with a grain of salt and really look to your specific requirements to understand where you could use the most help and where the technology can help you the most. So I hope you found this information useful. I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report, which includes the top 10 rankings of ERP systems 
as well as warehouse management systems, supply chain management systems, CRM, all other types of technology. That same report also provides a host of best practices as it relates to the people and process and technology side of digital transformations. So I hope you found this information useful and have a great day.